So the first two kits I'm going to show you are the Scalloped White Mascari Planter and then the Resin Dipped, Resin Dipped White Mascari Planter. No, it's not a planter, it's a pot, this one. So basically two different pots, but exactly the same contents. Um, so you pot them up in exactly the same way. So I'm just gonna do the gray one, so it's not to completely bore you with two um, versions of the same thing. So this is the resin pot. Um, so it's not got a drainage hole, so you don't have a saucer with it. Um, it's great for like rustic styling. It's how we started with Hella Petal with these pots. Um, we bought them back into January uh, last month just to do something a bit different and you guys love them again and you know they sold out. So I thought this month for February let's just do a whole mixture of all the stuff and then you can just choose what you like. Um, so yeah, so this is the resin dip pot and then introducing this soft dove grey terracotta pot um, in this lovely scallop detail with its matching saucer. Now this is a 21 centimetre planter, so it's a really, really lovely size, um, works perfectly on an island or on a sideboard or on an alcove, um, on a, a shelf in an alcove. It's a lovely, lovely pot. Um, we have these in rows other months. We haven't got them this month, we've just got the grey and then we've got the rose in some bigger, gorgeous planters, um, which I'll show you in a bit. So yes, yeah, so this is the grey. Okay, so in your kit, you will have your white mascari bulbs likely to be in two pots. So in total, you're probably looking at having about between 12 and 14 bulbs of mascari um, for your, um, each pot. You'll have your gravel, your compost, and your three different types of moss. You'll have your cherry blossom twigs and your birch twigs, which we usually have in our kits. Okay, so let's begin. Now, adding in your gravel first. So if you're, we're gonna show you the gray, but it's the same, same sort of technique for the resin. Um, pop your pot on its saucer and then add in the gravel. There's not loads of gravel in these kits. And the main reason is because you don't really need a lot. You just need a little bit around the bottom to help with drainage. Now, the main reason you don't need a lot is because we have put a substantial amount of horticultural grit in the compost um, for these kits because it means that the bulbs aren't going to be sat in water and their root system isn't going to lead to sort of um, root rot. So you don't need loads of gravel because we've got really good drainage in the compost. Okay. And then now, I'm gonna try and be really tidy this month. Really gonna try hard not to spill everywhere like I usually do. Okay, so adding, adding in your compost. Just add in, I mean, it's up to you really. I would suggest just adding in how much you have in your kit um, because the amount that you have is sort of the right amount so that the bulbs sort of peep through above the rim of the pot. Okay. So you're kind of looking at taking the gravel, uh, the gravel, the compost, to sort of an inch just below the rim of the pot. Okay. And then you have your two pots of mascari. Now these are very fresh in, but they've just started to flower and they are just so cute, so gorgeous. Now, I personally wouldn't pop them in like this. So, I mean, you can if you want to, you can just take them out of the pot, put them in, done. I personally like to separate them all so that I can sort of dot them about, cluster some, um, and just make it look a little bit more organic and, and sort of natural. So, give your mascara bells a nice drink on arrival. Don't leave them in the box. Um, if you leave them in the box uh, for too long a time, they will go a bit yellow. They will be fine. If, you know, if you've left them in the box for three days, not ideal, they will be fine. Just give them, put them in somewhere really bright, give them a good drink and, and they should be fine. Okay, so that now you're going to sort of break up this gorgeous root system over your, do it over your pot in the spirit of keeping things nice and tidy because you can then use this compost that's in the pot, in the, sorry, in the plastic plant pot, you can use that in your kit. Okay. 
So let's just do this pot first. I've separated, yeah, I've made a mess. I've separated all of the bulbs. And now I'm going to take them individually and put, place them sort of where I want them. So I do a technique where I basically sort of ravel them, ravel them, it's not the right word, is it? Sort of spiral them into a little nest. So you've got the root system sort of tucked under and then I simply pop them onto the compost. Now, when we get to the moss, I'll show you a sort of technique to raise the bulbs above the moss. So at the moment, they're sort of just tucked, just below the rim of the pot. But what, we, what we're kind of aiming for is for them to be sort of sat on top of the moss so you get the sort of look of the bulbs in amongst all the other gorgeous bits that you have in your kit. Okay, what's that? It's a twig. Okay, Leander, there's one there. So that's your first pot of bulbs, and now I'm going to break up the second pot. Again, don't worry about the root system, it will be absolutely fine. It will all grow back. I can't help but make a mess, I just think it's in my genes. But that's the fun, right? lovely already. Okay, so now all of your bulbs are in the pot. Don't worry about any mess and don't worry if that you know some of them are lower or higher we will sort it all out after we put the moss in, which we're gonna do next. Okay, so you have three different types of moss in your kits. You have the bun moss, which is the chunkier sort of moss. You probably have less of this. And the reason is because actually it's the flat moss, which is this sort of style moss or variety of moss that really, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's really easy to use and really, really sort of sets the bulbs up high, if that makes sense, you'll see in a minute. And then you have the sphagnum moss, which is the kind of gnarly, kind of foresty um, moss with loads of kind of pine needles in there, um, twigs in there. It's a really kind of like organic looking moss, so that just adds another dimension. Okay, we're gonna start with the flat moss, which is the one that's kind of like a woodland carpet. It's also called carpet moss, I think, sorry. And you just sort of break it up, and just tuck it around your bulbs. Don't worry about positioning at this point. So just sort of tuck it around, break it up into little pieces. Don't worry if you're covering up any of the bulbs because we're going to lift them in a moment and I'll show you how to do that. And then I'm going to pop in a little bit of bun moss. So I'm going to take the root system off the back. So you just simply sort of pinch it off. And then I'm just going to add little touches of that. Again, it's just sort of to add, I don't know, another kind of texture to it. Another sort of tone of green. And then I'm going to add in the sphagnum moss. Now at this point, I'm just going to tuck this in into the little gap, sort of roll it up into kind of a little cluster and then just pop it in. At this point you can't really see the bulbs, um, but don't worry, we will poke them through now. Okay, now I don't mind areas of compost, that black kind of tone. I quite like that, I think it adds a sort of um, receding sort of look to your pot. So in my opinion, leave a little bit of the um, compost on show. Also, I really like when the root systems are on show a little bit as well. So if you've got some white roots like peeking through, perfect, all the better. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to lift your bulbs. 
it sounds very technical, well no it doesn't sound technical at all does it? It sounds like I'm really complicating it and it's sort of like a big deal, it's not so easy. All you do is you hold the moss either side of your mascara bowl and you simply lift it up and just pop it back down. So it goes from just the green popping through to now that beautiful papery bowl which just adds another texture to your kit. When these flower, my goodness, they will look just beautiful. I look forward to the mascara kits every year, so this is our third year doing them, and you guys love them as much as I do. Okay. Oh, so cute. Okay, I think that's all of them. Can't see any underneath. So now they're all sat on top of the moss, but their root system is in contact with the soil. So they're going to get, <clears throat> excuse me, they're going to get that um, water um, and the, the nutrients. Um, we are now going to add in the twigs. So the purpose of the twigs is sort of aesthetic. Um, it creates that kind of rustic feel. Um, it makes it a little bit more unusual. Um, it's more of a centerpiece and it finishes it off beautifully, but also, as your mascara grow, they'll probably go to about here, I'd say. If you put them somewhere really warm, they will go leggy. So they will um, sort of bolt almost, they'll go really high and then they'll be a bit kind of droopy. So it doesn't matter because you can weave them around the twigs, which is the second purpose of those twigs. But ideally, if you can keep it somewhere cool or cool as possible, then you're more likely to get a sturdier stem um, and therefore less Okay, so let's add in the twigs. So in your resin and your grey planter, so in the white, the scalloped white mascara planter kits, you get, I believe, seven um, uh, stems of cherry blossom and then you get your birch as well. Um, so I will show you how to add this in. Now your cherry blossom will be trimmed down so that it can all go in the box because you don't need a big bunch of it. Um, but you can trim it further if you want to. It completely depends on how you like it to look. I'm gonna kind of take it to around sort of the six or seven inch mark. And then you simply pop that in to your soil. Doesn't need to go too far, it's just so that it's sturdy. And also don't worry, as you can see here, the bulbs are kind of moving around. You can just rejig and place them back on top of your compost, of, of your moss, sorry. So it's a case of kind of finding an inroad into your moss. And I personally like to have them sort of different heights, 23, four, five, six, like one more. <laughs> Wait, get it grown. Is that in? No, that doesn't want to go in. There we go. And one more. And then we can add in the birch. Now it's worth pointing out with the cherry blossom, sometimes the buds are kind of like green and vibrant, like these are actually, but sometimes they're more sort of brown and then the green will come, they're sort of more closed. So they've almost got like a papery kind of casing on them. So if yours arrive and they're brown, don't worry, they will should turn green if you water them enough. Um, will they flower? Mm, maybe can't guarantee it because really to get them to flower you need them in like a, a vase of water um, but then at the same time you don't want to overwater your bulbs just so that the cherry blossom blossoms um, but hopefully you will get maybe some lovely kind of little delicate leaves green leaves um, but if not 
I personally, I just love how it looks like that. So you never know. Okay, so now adding in your birch. So with your birch, it will come in your little um, brown stringed bundle and you can just cut it down into sort of sections like this and then just pop that in. For me, it just adds a kind of uh, textured kind of feel. And then you can weave in your mascari as it grows. So in the images on the website, um, when you purchased your kits, they were they were pretty um, in full bloom actually. They surprised me um, at how quickly they flowered. They were beautiful. Um, but as you can see in those photographs, I've weaved them amongst the, um, the twigs. Okay. So then a quick sort of jig again of the bulbs, lifting them all up gently. And as you can see here, so I've placed some in sort of together in clusters, and then I've put some sort of a bit more separate. Um, in terms of care for your um, your kits, for both of them, it's exactly the same. So I would suggest watering every kind of two days. Um, and I don't mean watering so it's drenched and waterlogged. I mean sort of, a, you know, a, a nice drink, making sure that the compost is damp, not completely sort of soggy. Um, making sure that you water the compost and not just the moss. So make sure that the water goes through into the compost. Um, keep them somewhere bright and cool if you can, um, but don't worry too much. They're a pretty kind of robust bulb um, and they should be fine no matter where you have them in your home. Um, and now the best bit is for next year, if you would like to put them in your garden, let them flower. And then once the flowers have gone over, you can remove them, so snip them and just discard those. Leave, leave the leaves on your bulbs, so the sort of shoots, um, they will still look lovely, hopefully, even after the white flowers have gone, you know, it's still, still a centrepiece, so keep it how, it how that is. Let those leaves go yellow, so that will mean that all those nutrients in those leaves have gone into the bulb. Then once they've gone yellow and they start to look a bit kind of you know, past their best. You can then trim those down, put them in the ground in your garden, and then they'll come back next spring. So, and then you can reuse your beautiful pots for something else. Um, and your pots will last for years and years, especially these ones, they are frost proof. They can go outside, they can come inside. Um, they will get better with age. They, they go sort of really kind of gnarly and rustic and watermarked. Um, which in my opinion just adds to their charm. So yeah, it's a kit that give, keeps on giving and hopefully you will have some white mascara in your garden next year, um, next spring. So there you have it. Those are the white mascara planter kits and the resin dipped pot kits. <laughs>